Hey guys, what's up? It's JR Huber and welcome to a new video. So as you guys can see, I am in a completely new background. I just moved into a brand new studio. The first time I've ever had all of my recording equipment and puzzles outside of where I live. I am super excited to be in the studio and I can't wait to start making videos here. So this is of course a studio tour as you guys can see by the title. But before we get started with that, I just wanna explain a little bit about why I moved in here and also kind of where I wanna take my uh, channel in the future because I kind of feel like I almost see this as a little bit of a reboot in a way or a refresher or, or whatever it is you wanna call it. But basically the reason I'm in here is because my living situation is gonna be changing very soon. As you guys may know, I recently moved out into my own apartment, uh, but I'm actually going to be moving again fairly soon in with some roommates. So I'm going to be going back down to having one bedroom. And so I'm obviously can't really fit all of my recording equipment and all of my puzzles uh, along with my bed and everything in one room. So I decided to do something that I've wanted to do for a very long time, which is to get a dedicated studio space for recording. I have wanted a setup like this for so long, this dual camera angle here um, with the cubes behind me, like centered up and everything. Like that's what I've just wanted for a really long time. And I'm so happy that I can finally make it a reality now. And if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that the white table is back. So longtime viewers of the channel know that I've used a white background for for a lot of my videos, most of them. But after a while, I would always end up getting like unsatisfied with it because I couldn't ever quite get the lighting to look right or the colors to look right. However, since then, I have learned a whole lot about lighting, color correction. I'm just a lot more knowledgeable than I was, you know, a few years ago. And I feel like I actually know what I'm doing now. And I feel like this is pretty much the best my videos have ever looked. I'm so, so happy with how great this has turned out. So if I switch uh, to this angle here, I mean, Look how great the lighting is. If I just uh, grab a cube here, yeah, the lighting is pretty much perfect. I am so, so happy with how this came out. So I'm just really, really excited to kind of kick off this new chapter in my YouTube journey. I know that for a very long time, um, I've been very late with a lot of videos, a lot of reviews. Um, I've been procrastinating a lot, but I really want to change things around. I finally feel like I'm really starting to get excited about making videos again. I haven't had that excitement for quite some time. So I do wanna talk a little bit more about where I wanna go with my channel in the future. I obviously do still wanna talk about speed cubes, but I don't want that to be my primary focus anymore. I just find reviewing speed cubes to be quite repetitive. Uh, a lot of the cubes are just similar in a lot of ways. So uh, I would expect to see more shorter reviews in the future where I more so just focus on how does the cube perform while it's solving? Does it feel nice? And do I personally like it? And that's pretty much it. I think getting bogged down with the minutia of each individual cube when a lot of them are very similar in a lot of ways is just not very interesting to watch, especially for you guys when you're trying to decide which cube to buy. In the future though, I really do wanna put a lot more emphasis on non-WCA puzzles or twisty puzzles as I like to call them. Non-WCA is just kind of a clunky term, I feel. I feel like the WCA events are like the speed cubes and the non-WCA is twisty puzzles, you know? I just really wanna show off like the coolest, most complicated, just crazy looking puzzles to the world, especially custom made puzzles. So if any of you guys are puzzle modders or puzzle designers out there, um, you know, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, something like that. I'd be really interested in showing off one of your puzzles. But just in general, I wanna talk about more non-WCA puzzles, even mass-produced ones, obviously, that are coming out as well. So with all that being said, I want to kick off this new chapter in my YouTube journey with a studio tour. Since I just moved in, I figured I might as well show you guys this place. It's probably gonna be the cleanest it ever will be uh, in this state after just getting set up. So uh, I think this would be the best time to show it to you guys. So the main bulk of this setup is actually relatively the same as what it was before, um, just with a different table um, and a slightly different lighting configuration, but it's, you'll see, it's mostly the same. All right, let's get started. So when you first come into the room, the first thing that you'll probably notice is that the walls are purple. Um, I actually really love this. The building that I'm in has all kinds of different colors on the walls that you just don't usually see. Uh, and I think it's really unique and cool. Purple is a dope color anyway. The desk that I'm filming on is from Ikea. Um, um, and I'll have everything linked in the description too if you want to find anything. Uh, but yeah, this desk is great. It's really nice and sturdy. And my favorite thing about it is the rounded corners, which makes it a lot easier to maneuver around, which is very important in a 
kind of cramped space. It's not that cramped, but there's definitely a little bit of maneuvering that has to be done to get around. So these rounded corners makes it a lot easier. So I've got a lot of stuff attached to the desk. So let's start with the lights. These are the same lights from last time. They're pretty cheap LED panels from Yongnuo with this built-in diffuser, but they've got some crazy bright output and they've held up super well. I have them attached to these Rode microphone arms, which are also awesome. It makes it really easy to reposition the lights if I need to. Also mounted to the desk, I've got two monitors for previewing both camera angles. This left one is a 27 inch Dell 4K monitor. Uh, it used to be my primary monitor at my desk before I got an ultra wide. I actually have this mounted upside down so that the feed from my camera is right side up. Um, but having a 4K preview monitor is awesome because you can see exactly what the video is going to look like while you're recording. This other monitor on the right is from BenQ. It's a 24 inch 1080p monitor. I don't know exactly what model. Interesting story about this one. The guy I bought it off of had actually seen my videos before and was an old viewer of the channel. So. Small world, you know? I haven't mounted up really high like this because I put my laptop under here when I'm recording and I need to push it back pretty far to get it out of frame. Above the desk, we've got this same C-stand, uh, just angled slightly differently to get it out of the way of the front-facing camera. I have the third LED panel mounted to a friction arm that's attached to the C-stand. And at the very end, I have a ball head that I mount my GH5 to for the overhead angle. The GH5 is such a great camera. I've absolutely loved using it. It just hands down produces the best image with the best color profile out of any camera I've ever used. I doubt I'll have to upgrade for a very, very long time. Attached to the GH5, we have a Panasonic 45 to 150 millimeter lens. This is a brand new addition that I'm really excited about. I can now finally zoom in super far to get some awesome close up shots and when zoomed out all the way at 45 millimeters I can still get some pretty huge puzzles in frame. Next to the C-stand we have my second camera the Panasonic G7 filming directly at me. This one has the kit lens from the GH5 on it which is actually a really high quality lens. It's a 12 to 60 millimeter and that 12 millimeter focal length allows me to get that really nice wide angle shot of all of the puzzles behind me. The G7 has also been a great camera. It's like almost as good as the GH5 especially for something like YouTube. Um, uh, and it's way less expensive. It's definitely my go-to recommendation for a starter mirrorless camera. The only thing I really don't like about it is that when you're outputting through HDMI to a monitor, you can't preview while you're recording, which I wish I would have known before getting this BenQ monitor, but it's still nice to have a big screen to make sure my framing and focus is perfect before I start recording. After I start, it's not really that important. I can just use the LCD screen on the camera. So I don't like using autofocus with the G7 since it loses focus way too easily. It just kind of constantly moves in and out of focus. So I use this remote shutter to get focus while I'm sitting down. So I'm not constantly running back and forth trying to get the exact Right focus every time before I start shooting. This is still a one-man operation, so this remote shutter makes it a lot easier. Once I'm sitting down, I can just half press to nail focus real quick and then full press to start recording. So this G7 is just sitting on an Amazon Basics tripod. There's absolutely no need for anything more complicated since it's a static shot. As you can see, I've got sandbags on everything too, just so everything's nice and secure. Don't want anything to be tipping over or accidentally being moved out of place. So next to that tripod, we have my makeshift mic stand. So this has got the bottom half of a tripod to keep it more stable and the top half of a regular mic stand so I can boom out the microphone, uh, which is still the Rode NTG4 Plus. I've got this really nifty little pop filter on here. I heard about this from a DSLR video shooter video, um, and it works really well. I've just got this mic boomed up right out of frame, but still pointed directly at me for the clearest audio. To get the best audio, I've also put in these two foam boards and just leaned them against the wall. The other two foam pieces were in here when I moved in, so I don't know what brand they are. The foam board pieces seem to make pretty much a negligible difference to the audio quality. I tested it before and after, but you know what? I don't have anywhere else to put them. Might as well put them in here. So getting back to the microphone setup, I still record using a Focusrite Scarlett Solo that records directly into my laptop. This little guy has worked really well for many years, so I still don't really feel the need to get an external recorder. So that's about it for the recording equipment. The rest of the stuff in this room is just these other two bookshelves, which just holds miscellaneous equipment and other random stuff. And then of course, we've got the cubes. So I've got them all on these three IKEA 
bookshelves. I've had these forever and they're just super sturdy and nice looking. I've actually managed to get just about all of my puzzles on these middle rows that show up on camera. And these shelves are just packed with cubes. This three by three shelf up at the top is three rows deep. I haven't done a count in quite a while, but if I had to guess, I'd say my collection is easily over 700 in number at this point. I've also got some LED lights strung up in here. Uh, it definitely looks a lot cooler when you turn off the video lights. They're just so bright that the LEDs barely show up on camera, but the subtle effect is still there. So I like it. And the last thing in this setup is the tripod I've been filming this portion of the video on, which is the same one from Manfrotto. It's a really high quality tripod that I've also had for years and it just works great. The legs and tripod head are sold separately though, but I'll link both in the description, of course. So that is the new studio. I am just so excited to be in this space and I can't wait to start making more videos here. The first thing I need to do is get caught up with Puzzle Crate. I'm like four months behind. I've also got some really cool puzzles just for the collection that I'm gonna be unboxing soon from Puzzle Trader. And of course, I'll definitely have more speed keeping videos coming out soon. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me through all of these years. It really means the world to me. You guys are truly the best. I'm just really excited to really start making videos again and I hope you guys are excited to watch them. So if you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like button, turn on notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.